Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a review of the new iPod Nano 7th generation. This brings back a much more traditional design, but is it any good? First step is to pop open the box, and inside you'll find the iPod Nano in yellow, although in person it's pretty green. You'll also find the new lightning cable to charge and sync, and the Apple EarPods, which look like the old earbuds but actually don't sound bad at all. Pop the screen protector off, and finally the iPod is free. Take a look around the iPod Nano, and you'll see it's absurdly small. Along the left side, you'll see the volume rockers, as well as a center button, which allows you to pause, skip tracks, and more. The top houses a sleep-wake button, and on bottom you'll see the lightning jack, plastic window for the Bluetooth antenna, and the headphone jack. To give you a better idea of how thin the new Nano is, it's identical in thickness to the cable on the earpods. Hook in a pair of beefier headphones, and the Nano looks downright silly. Speaking of audio, of course that's what an iPod is all about. With the included headphones, the Nano sounds perfectly fine, with a moderate amount of bass and solid overall quality. Hook up a pair of more power-hungry headphones like the Audio-Technica ATH-M50s, and the iPod will drive them just fine, although of course not as well as with a proper setup. Even though it looks just like iOS, Apple officially calls this the Nano OS, and it's not hard to see why. You have no support for apps, and Wi-Fi is nowhere to be found, so it's best not to go toss your iPhone away just yet. To navigate, you can swipe back from any screen, or hit the home button to go to the home screen. It's very responsive, and features a 2.5-inch display with a resolution of 240 by 432 in addition to music, you can always watch a video on the tiny display. It plays 480p video synced from iTunes, and the player is just fine, but honestly I can't imagine anyone actually wanting to watch a movie on something this small. Same goes for pictures. You can view them, but it's not something terribly useful. Mackie Plus is built in along with a pedometer, which can be helpful for exercising. You'll find a few more apps like radio, podcasts, and a clock, but don't expect to do much more than listen to music on it. Battery life is really impressive. I've been using the Nano off and on for several days now, with the screen on full brightness, and I've only just dented my first charge. The thing with the iPod Nano is that it's still entirely tethered to iTunes. Want to add a song? Hopefully you don't have Spotify, because you're going to need to import the music into iTunes, find your lightning cable, let the iPod stop anything you were doing, and then transfer the files over. With music available effortlessly everywhere you turn on smartphones and even the iPod Touch, this feels like a major hassle. Don't get me wrong, the iPod Nano is the best iPod for music yet. It's tiny, uncomplicated, and amazingly enough, plays MP3s. The thing is, that's exactly what the first iPod Nano did when I bought it in 2005. If this was $100, I'd say it makes sense, but at $150, it's not much less than the vastly more useful iPod Touch, which makes it a hard sell. Don't forget to hit up that like button, and if you're interested in more videos like this, I've got lots of coverage of the new iPod Touch. Anyway, I will catch you in the next one.